Hello everyone and welcome back to this second lecture for the course Introduction to Data Science. In the previous video we talked about data transformations and in particular we talked about the z-score. In one of the other previous videos we also talked about outliers and extreme observations. What we want to do now is we want to use the z-scores such that we can say for an observation this is an outlier yes or no so we want to have a, a quantifiable way to determine an outlier so assume that i transform my data with the z-score then i know that the majority of the data is in the interval minus two two that was the rule of thumb and if we think about a normal distribution you know that for a normal distribution Extreme observations are outside the interval minus 3, 3. So I can use as a rule of thumb for my outliers. I can say an observation is an outlier if its z-score is outside this interval minus 3, 3. So you see that we, we assume more or less that the data is symmetric because we say the mean of the z-scores is zero. And then whether it is an outlier, it doesn't really matter if it is an outlier in the positive or the negative direction because my standard deviation is one. So I just go three standard deviations to the left and to the right. Let's then look at a second method for detecting outliers where I use the quartiles. So I say in this case, I take Q1, the first quartile. So remember that the first quartile is the, um, is the x value such that 25% is smaller and 75% is larger than Q1. So Q1 is a small observation. I then start in Q1, I use the IQR, the interquartile range, so Q3 minus Q1, and I take a factor 1.5. I take the small Q1, I subtract 1.5 times the interquartile range which is a measure for the spread the deviation that you can expect in your data and i say well this is my lower bound and then i take q3 which is your 75 percent quantile and i add 1.5 times the interquartile range and now i say well all my observations should be in this in this interval and if they are outside that interval then I say it is a um, outlier. And this approach is used when you have a box plot. Remember in a box plot you have the box where you have the edges Q1 and Q3 and then I have these what we call whiskers and this is 1.5 times the interquartile range. So the, the, the length so you start in Q3, you go up 1.5 times the IQR, or you start in Q1 and you go down 1.5 times the IQR. If you have observations that are outside this range, these are labeled as outliers. If you use the function boxplot in R, then the box contains Q1, Q3, and in the middle you have Q2, which is the median. And then with the range value you can control these these whiskers where i want to um, have my interval so that i can say outside that interval i have an outlier inside it's not an outlier the default is that the range is 1.5 meaning i go up 1.5 the interquartile range or i go down 1.5 the interquartile range but you can change this value for example you can take a value k which is larger or smaller than 1.5 meaning that you allow for more outliers if you make it smaller than 1.5 or you make it harder for an observation to be labeled as an outlier then you take the k larger than 1.5 we bumped already several times into the normal distribution and the normal distribution is still the most important distribution in statistics because many important values such as the p-values confidence bounds and so on they are rooted into the theory of normal distributions. Also, if you want to do mathematics, if you want to derive formulas, 
it helps a lot if your underlying variable is normally distributed. For example, if you do linear regression that works for different types of random variables, but if your underlying data set is generated with normal distributions, you can derive much more formulas. And a normal distribution is a symmetric distribution. We also bumped into that problem already several times. However, if we look at data, very often the data is skewed. So it's not symmetric, meaning if you have skewed data, it can never come from a normal distribution. Of course, if you have symmetric data, sometimes it's still not normally distributed, but we know if it is skewed, it's definitely, definitely not normally distributed. So if we want to use normal distributions for skewed data, we have to first apply a transformation. We cannot directly apply it on the skewed data. We have to do a transformation to make the data symmetric again. So, and these are three possible um, transformations that return a more symmetric distribution if you have skewed data. Of course, if you take data, you apply, for example, a log transformation, it will never get you something that is perfectly normally distributed. However, you hope that after applying the transformation, your data is more normally distributed, it's closer to a normal distribution, such that applying results from normal distributions is, is, uh, is justified. Let's see how we can test if a data set is following a normal distribution. So assume that you have a random variable x that has a normal distribution with some mean and some variance. Then what you can show, you don't need to do that, but what you can show is that the quantiles of that random variable x can be expressed in this way where phi minus 1p, this is your quantile function of a standard normal distribution. So what you find is that if you have a normal distribution x, its quantile function is a linear function of the normal, the standard normal quantile function. So if you want to test if your data is normally distributed, you use what we call a QQ plot, a quantile quantile plot, because I'm going to plot the quantiles of a standard normal distribution against the quantiles of my data set that is generated from, that could be generated from a normal distribution. If it comes from a normal distribution, the relation should be a linear relationship. And that's easy to, to um, uh, to check, to verify. You have the two quantiles and you check if you can draw a line through the scatter plot. If it's the case, then we have an extra argument for saying that it, my data comes from a normal distribution. If it is not following a linear pattern, then I'm sure it's not coming from a normal distribution. We take again the histogram of the variable mileage. So this histogram we saw already several times in the, um, in the slides. Now we apply a log transformation. And now you see a difference with the z-scores and the min-max. Because if I apply a log transformation, the shape of my distribution changes. So here I had this right skewed shape. Now I get something that it seems to be more, still a little bit skewed, but now skewed to the other side. So I am getting rid of my skewness in the original data, but it seems that I'm overcompensating a bit because now it's skewed on this side. If I draw a QQ plot, I start with the QQ plot of the original data. And what you see is that the original data is definitely not normally distributed. It's far away from a linear trend. You have a problem here and also here. You see large deviations from your linear trend. If you apply a log transformation, it's still not perfect. You still see that you have a problem here. And if you compare with the original data, you see that whereas the original data has a problem here, now the problem shifts to here in the log transform data. So it seems again that I'm overcompensating with my log transformation. But other than this, the rest of the data seems to follow that linear pattern. So it seems to be uh, not 
still not following a normal distribution, but we are getting closer to a normal distribution after I do the log transformation than when I do not a transformation at all. Assume then that I draw a box plot and I start here with a box plot for the original data. Then you see here the Q1, the Q3 and the Q2. Then what you see is that here you have all these, um, these outliers. So it seems that in the normal data set we have many outliers. But if I transform my data, you see that we have still outliers, but we get rid of several outliers after I transform the data. So I make my data more symmetric. It's not completely symmetric, but I take make it more symmetric so that more data is captured in the say the middle of the data set and then these these are still the outliers in my data sets.